me about Christy. Yeah. I am the CEO of Elevate Network, a global community of women at work. I am a parent. I am three kids. Uh, of three children. <laughs> I am a good friend. And I'm someone who looks to find the passion and impact every single day that I can have in this world. I'll be honest, I didn't know that that was my mission for a good part of my career and my life. And then there's little things that happen along the way that kind of lead you to a place. Um, and it wasn't this aha moment where I was like, oh, this is what I'm here to be. Uh, you start to just realize what gets you out of bed every morning and the things that make you excited and the things that make you feel fulfilled. And when you find that, um, it becomes a huge part of what you do every day. So I had talked to a friend of mine recently, um, and I was lamenting the fact that I don't have a lot of hobbies. So I feel, I feel like I'm, you know, I, I should paint or work out or do something. And, uh, and she laughed and she's like, well, you're on the board of the Girl Scouts. You're on the board of an organization focused on uh, employment opportunities for veterans, on the board for workforce development, I do work with UN women. I uh, am on the board for the Villanova School of Innovation, Creativity, and Entrepreneurship. I'm an angel investor. Uh, but all of that serves to actually make me stronger at what I do every day and makes me utilize the, the knowledge and insights I have to um, create more impact in other places. So she rightly pointed out that that's my hobby, <laughs> yeah. is just doing what I love and doing it. 24 7. Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting. I, I, I noticed that you're also, or you were involved in Taproots. Yeah, I so, was. So, so Aaron. I don't know Aaron personally. Uh, so, Taproot is an organization that is a nonprofit and they leverage the skills and expertise of professionals in marketing, HR, strategy to uh, support nonprofits in those areas that they may be lacking. And I, when I first came to New York City, thought, all right, I want to do volunteer work. Where should I go? And I couldn't find a place. Um, you know, there's New York Cares and there's a few things, but I, I just struggled to find the place where I felt that I could have the greatest impact. And I stumbled upon Taproot and I loved it because I was able to use the skills that I had to create greater good in the world and to support causes. Um, so handcrafting justice we worked with, uh, we worked with a few uh, nonprofits focused on uh, employment for immigrants, and it was a great experience. Yeah, they're, they're, what they created is fantastic. And I don't know, again, you haven't met Aaron. Aaron's a great guy. He actually now has a company called Imperative, which is okay. all about um, purpose, you know, finding your purpose and helping with organizations. Uh, he, he was on the show, great guy, and their organizations. That's awesome. I, I can reconnect you if you have an interest. Always. Uh, yeah, I think that it. I think it ties into some of the missions uh, that you're involved with. So, you know, I wasn't expecting the conversation to go this way, but but you really touched on something interesting that I think everybody that's listening to this, I don't care if you're a man, woman, whatever age you're at, about how you kind of found your passion, mm -hmm. you know, and and it wasn't an aha moment. Do you mind kind of expanding on that a little bit? I'm happy to. Um, I I think. So I'm going to tell a quick story, and then, and then I'll get into that. Um, it's actually about my, my son, which is funny. I'm going to probably get emotional because I always am when I talk about my kids. Um, but he had come to the Mobilized Women Summit uh, last year, and he was nine at the time and was listening to some of the conversations. And we had a, a conversation with uh, the founder, Jay Cohen Gilbert, the founder of B Corp. We had Patagonia World Wildlife Foundation on stage. They talked a lot about what's happening in this world and the role that they're playing in trying to mitigate some of uh, the impact of their businesses or impact on their stakeholders, i.e. the World Wildlife Foundation. And my son was just really, you know, as, as understandably a nine-year-old whose world is very small, um, <clears throat> he, was, he was really caught off guard by the conversation. You know, he said, Mom, what's happening in our world? And... So it was interesting because he didn't just say, wow, that's a shame, and just go about his day. He then ran for student government uh, to, on a platform of eliminating plastic in the school, and he won. <laughs> and then he uh, just last week or two weeks ago wrote a letter to Larry Fink at BlackRock talking about uh, 
uh, BlackRock financial institution not <clears throat> investing in fossil fuels. And um, so the next day, actually, BlackRock came out with a statement, uh, their annual report, which mentioned climate some 30 times and said they were going to make a concerted effort to stop those investment practices. Now, my son's postcard did not directly <laughs> reach it to Larry Fink. But what I think that shows is finding causes that you care about and doing something about it. Whatever it is, I mean, there's a million things to care about, but how do you find what, what hits you in you know, your heart or your being and, and take steps to do something? And oftentimes I think that that feels really overwhelming because you're kind of like, well, this, you know, the, <laughs> the earth is huge. Like, how am I gonna save it? Um, but there's little things you can do in your home and in your community that really have an impact. Uh, and so for me, my, uh, you know, like I said, I don't, didn't have an aha moment, but back many, many years ago, I worked at a company called vault.com. It was a career media company. And we did all these surveys of employees of what it was like to work at companies. And as part of that, we started an, an initiative around legal diversity and working with law firms on measuring the diversity within their associates and partners and something um, that really stood out to me was uh, the, the effort began because general counsel, so the people who hire the law firms and major companies who hold the purse strings said, well, we want diverse teams working on our matters and, and we want to keep track of what those metrics are in progress. And there was, while the initial intent was great, there was no action because what we saw was met, most law firms didn't have great metrics and they weren't improving, but no one was improving. So there wasn't a lot of movement happening. So there was no accountability. And the pathway to progress was unclear. Many of the companies just didn't know how to move the needle. We had a, a legal diversity career fair. Thousands of law students and associates came to this fair to meet with top law firms who were there to recruit and source diverse candidates. And at the end of the day, I walked up to a recruiter who had a stack this big of resumes. Now, this is back in the early 2000s, so resumes on paper are still a thing. I don't know if they still <laughs> are. Still <laughs> and <laughs> I said to the uh, recruiter, I said, well, this is amazing. This is amazing. I feel like this is something that's going to move the needle. Next year, we're going to see different metrics. Next year, we're going to see progress. And he said, actually, no. Uh, because we tend to just recruit this top 10% of the top five law schools, and that's what who we hire. So out of this whole stack of resume, there's maybe one candidate that really fits the bill. So it's a Zaha moment when you see so much is happening, but there's these systemic systems that need to change. People need to open their mind. People need to be open to different ideas um, in order to see progress happen. And that felt like a big roadblock to me. I felt like, wow, you know, we're bringing together, the, we're bringing together all the pieces for the magic to happen and it's not happening. And I became a little bit frustrated. Uh, I'm beyond frustrated. So fast forward a few years later in my career and I'm working at a startup and I loved it and it was in a different space and it was really cool, but it just wasn't something that was getting me out of bed every day. And I went on a listening tour of a bunch of people in my network to understood what inspired them about their work. And it was on that listening tour that I... Can you explain a listening tour to, oh, yeah. to those that aren't familiar? Yeah. So a listening tour, um, I, I, you know, the world is your oyster. And we know that careers are not linear anymore. Um, Many of us are starting our own businesses. Many of us are doing different things. But you don't know everything about everything. You don't know what you might be missing out on. So when I was thinking about what's next for me, I reached out to my network and my network's network. You know, asked people I knew, who should I meet? Who do you think I should talk to? What I was looking for were people in different companies, uh, different industries, different stages of their career. And I just wanted to hear what they liked about what they did. I wanted to hear more about what they did. It can be hard to reach out and to a stranger um, and make an ask because I think, you know, we still live in a very busy world and it's um, the understanding of why someone's asking for your advice or, 
or what they might get out of it. Um, but I was beyond impressed with the number of people that responded. I had a lot of conversations that helped me clarify uh, the type of work I wanted to do and where I wanted to be. And during one of those conversations, uh, it was someone who um, at the time had been the leader of Elevate. And she looked at me and said, I think you should come work for us. And I said, okay. <laughs> and I had a job offer the next day. Yeah. So um, I started working there, but not necessarily because I was like, I'm so passionate about gender equality and this is what it is. I started working there and I, through um, very quickly, saw that spark in me that was ignited way many years before at that career fair. I saw a passion. I saw an opportunity to create change. And I saw the time was right, that businesses were listening. People were being more open to ideas. And I've never looked back since. That's awesome. And I love how you also put the label on the listening tour, because I think it, I want to continue, but if we could go back to that listening, sure. because I think that's a great way that you've, you've phrased it. And a lot of people that are also listening to and watching, I should say, the show um, are very interested and passionate about their careers and finding their passion. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know how to go about building the relationships to have those networks and then how to, like you said, the ask and how to go about accessing. Actually, the, the gentleman whose podcast that we just recently launched uh, is a gentleman by the name of Wayne Baker, Dr. Mm -hmm. Wayne Baker. He's famous. He's a famous sociologist, author, uh, professor in Michigan, and he actually just wrote a book. And I'm, it's killing me that I'm forgetting the name of this because it, it's actually just launched, but it's all about asking and the importance and how to do it and how few people you also touched on that you don't want to know, that you don't want to ask, but actually more people. And he's got this little little quiz you can take. Are you a giver or an asker? And most people prefer to give. The, I think is, that's so true. Yeah, so it's a real, oh, he's got the science behind it. it, it it's fascinating. I'll have to read that. I, mm -hmm. I, I have a goal for this year. I'm not a big fan of setting, um, you know, new year, new you, what are you gonna do in 2020? Uh, I had been for many years done that and I felt that I, I put too much weight on myself and goals oftentimes feel overwhelming. They're too big and they're hard to accomplish. Um, and so I, I kind of just try to break it down into more of the micro actions. You know, how am I feeling this week? What do I want to accomplish? How am I feeling this month? I do a lot of self-awareness time with myself validating. Huge. Um, and so a goal for, for now is being able to make an ask. I can't tell you how many times people come to me and they'll ask for something and, and I am a giver and I'll give a lot. And then they turn back, back to me and say, well, what can I do for you? And I'm always like, oh, I, I'm, 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 I'm okay. I don't need anything. I'm fine. And I don't want to kid myself because you have an opportunity yeah. to make an ask. So I this year my goal is to get on a, a board. I, I want to get on a for-profit board. Um, I've done a lot in the nonprofit space, but I'm a big advocate for businesses as a force for good. And um, so that's my ask. So I bet it's uncomfortable to make that ask when you're not used to it. I'm glad you're making it. So right everybody now, who's listening to it. this, now you've it. done this in abundance. So hopefully this will... <laughs> that's the first time I've really publicly said it, um, right. you know, but uh, <laughs> but I'm really happy I, I, yeah. I did. But yeah. I think that's, that's what it's about. It's, um, you know, there can be something that maybe that person on the other end of the conversation, they can't directly help you, but something may come across their their plate that they are like, oh, you know what? Someone mentioned that they wanted to get on a board or they may put it out to someone else. And that's the power of the network effect, mm. which is that it doesn't always have to be this immediate expectation on result. It's a long-term game. Mm -hmm. It's putting things out there, not knowing where that's going to lead to and just trusting in that process. Yeah, that is so true. Um, I, I call it my karmatic boomerang. Oh, I like that. Yeah, That's so good. so a couple of things that you, um, first, um, so with the ask, sometimes what I tell people is, I'm a terrible asker also, so mm -hmm. who am I to speak? But, but at least what I've learned is maybe it's not something that you need directly, but maybe you ask for someone that somebody else is in need. Mm -hmm. So your ask could be for, for me or for whomever, someone yeah. you work with or for your husband or for your kids. Um, but, but you, you talked about relationships and, and your, your, the, the foundation behind Elevate, you know, 85 Broads originally was about relationships, mm -hmm. about helping each other. You have an amazing network 
networks because we don't have a network. We're part of many networks. Yeah. But you have um, some phenomenal networks and, and just through the people that we know in kind, mm-hmm. high caliber, good people. You Very know? good people. So, so what did you do? What are you attributing to some of the relationships that you've been able to develop along the years? There, there, there's, uh, there's a lot that I want to unpack there, but if you don't mind, let's talk high level and then we might start drilling down a little more yeah. specific. Um, relationships are hard in the sense that they're living and breathing and you need to feed them. You need to give them attention. And that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, it's the plant that you water every single day. Um, but it's something you need to be intentional about investing in. And I, um, I think that that's really important because I, I don't think we all understand how to best do that. Um, so for example, I try to make it an effort to, um, engage on, on social networks. And it, it's a little bit hard for me because, um, it can be exhausting and <laughs> I don't always want to be on those places. <laughs> But I try to go and see what the people in my network are sharing, what they're posting, and to engage with them on that. I read a lot of articles. I'm, I'm very curious. And so I'm always reading something half with the intent of what can I learn and how does this expand my thinking, and half with the intent of who else would be interested in this. Can I interrupt you on that? Yeah. That's awesome. And that's something that... that so. It, it, with what I do, uh, we, it's teaching people about how to build relationships. And one of the other things that you talked about before was goals. I actually try to teach people habits because you don't mm-hmm. control your future. You control your habits and your yeah. habits control your future. Sure. So, the, But one of the things that I try to get people into the habit of doing is a journal. <clears throat> so keeping a journal of, you know, of, hey, what did you experience today? Mm-hmm. So, and, and one of the things is, you know, whether it's movies, articles, memes, something that, that just like what you touched on, the import, I can't stress enough the importance of you've you've so you've got something that you can share that's going to benefit somebody mm-hmm. else. So so I really I'm so glad you said yeah, that. I, and one of the other things you also said about when we first when you first introduced yourself, which is a, no one's ever done that, is that you like to describe yourself as a friend. So I wanted you were just on a you were on a uh, I didn't want to interrupt um, your inertia, but that was awesome. No, but uh, but everything you're saying is true. Which is how do we build in to our everyday life the ability to connect with others and. When you think about how humans have evolved over time, you know, decades ago, we lived in smaller towns, smaller communities. You saw people on the main street or in the store. It was much more of that social and the organic social interaction. Today, our main street USA is, you know, 52 states beyond, right? Or 50... 50? 50. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, no, I always do that too. I know. I, you know. Like that, I'm like, that's insane. Yeah. Um, it, the, the world is endless, the people we can connect with. And so it, you have to put more of that effort into creating the inertia, creating the organic touch points that deepen those relationships. Mm-hmm. That's not just a you know connection online, but becomes something more. And those are the relationships that, you know, are, are measured not in quantity, but in quality. And so, like I said, like it's keeping people top of mind who would be interested in this. How do I share this? I've built a really great cadence with um, my peers that I, you know, they can text me if they need something. I can text them if I need something. But we are able to meet on, you know, at five o'clock for a quick drink or a quick coffee. Um, and it always becomes something where it's not taking away from your family. It's not conflicting with other obligations. Um, for, we're fortunate enough that we have the ability to dash out of the office a little bit early to, to you know, support someone. So that in person is really nice. I have a friend who um, was a close friend of mine, lived in Brooklyn. She moved upstate, but she still works in the city. So every other Monday, we have a standing date at Grand Central Station. And you can build in those habits, you can build in the flexibility uh, and the time to put your community first. Can I ask you, because a big pushback, and it's so important, so what I've noticed, and this is through years, whether through a variety of different businesses and interviews and just life experiences, the most successful people, they get the value of the relationship. It's paramount to them. Mm -hmm. 
So, but I will, but the higher you go up in the food chain, which you're at, it is what it yeah. is, the harder it becomes. So, but what I try to impress upon, I'd love to get your perspective on this because the majority of people that I'm trying, that I, when I'm trying to teach mm -hmm. and train people and just kind of educate them and edify them on how to do it and why to do it, the pushback is, I don't have time. Oh, yeah. What is your, so, so what is your, so you've created time. Is it, so I'd love to get your, cause it's hard. So it's a matter of prioritization and then making it, and then making it happen. But he, he, listen to what you've done. I mean, you've made it a priority. Do you mind expanding on, I know I just threw a lot at you, but if you don't no, mind. No, I, I think you, you <clears throat> said it absolutely correctly. It's a matter of prioritization. How important is it? Right? We prioritize the things that matter to us. And during a work day, you know, if I get an email from someone, I, I'm more likely than not will respond to it. Even if I don't know you that well, um, there are people on my team who think that maybe I, I spend too much time on that. Um, but that's because it's not their priority. And to me, as you said, I opened as a friend, I, I genuinely care about other people and I care about the impact I can have on them and their lives. Um, I'm incredibly fortunate to be where I am right now um, in my career and, and personally. And so it means a lot to me to be able to support others uh, however I can. And one of the reasons that me means a lot to me is I wouldn't be here today without my network, without the people that paid it forward and supported me. Um, every job I've ever gotten was through networking. And as a business leader, uh, you may hear being a, a CEO or a leader can be really lonely. It can be hard. You're faced with a lot of tough decisions. Having peers that I can call, that I can lean on, that I can ask for advice means a lot to me. As a parent, parenting is hard. There's a lot of things that happen that you don't anticipate. Having yeah. other parents that are friends that I can talk about, what does this mean when my kid gets a phone or what, uh, can you pick him up? I can't be there. That's, that's helpful. Uh, every day in my life, there is somebody who is supporting me. And I think it is incredibly important that I do the same. That's awesome. So what have you done? How, how early in life did this hit you, the importance of this? And, and the, wh when did you become cognizant of, wow, okay, um, relationships are really important. <laughs> did you have one of those aha moments? <laughs> I did. I... Um, I mean, hi everything is clear in hindsight, <laughs> yeah. but I, mm. when I graduated from school, I went to Villanova and I uh, started working, I was an English and sociology major who started working in investment banking, uh, which is ironic, uh, but uh, was actually wonderful. Uh, I had been connected to a recruiter who placed me within this bank, saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. Uh, which was business skills and acumen. And <laughs> I, I I think it set me on a trajectory uh, that I don't know if I necessarily would have been on otherwise um, because I just realized I loved finances. I loved business. I loved analyzing business and projecting where it was going to go. And it was really exciting to me. Um, but I didn't love working in a bank. So then a friend from college called me up. She was working at a startup. This is back in like 2000 and said, you have to come work here. It's a great company. And uh, it's a sales role. I said, absolutely not. I'm not a salesperson. That's not my thing. She said, no, 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 trust me. I know you. You'd be great in this role. You should do it. I said, nope, that's no, no. She's like, Christy, just try it out. So I did. Uh, I loved it. I joined the company. I became the um, VP of all of our North American revenue operations when we sold the company and then was tasked with uh, leading our global expansion. And that was all by the age of 30. And so it comes to those people that believe in you, that see things in you that you might not see in yourself, that give you the confidence and the push to take the risks, um, not feeling like you're not going it alone. And that's a really powerful impact to have on someone's life. So today, when someone comes to me and says, I need help finding a job, uh, or I need advice, or I need, you know, insights, I, I try to help them see things in themselves that maybe they don't see, or I try to, 
use my experience to offer up ideas that maybe they're not aware of. Um, having a network is a really powerful thing. And it's something that, you know, takes time and it takes energy and it takes work, but it, it pays off in multitude. So I try telling people it's not called net funding, it's net working. Yeah. It does take energy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what is it throughout, what's the message throughout Elevate in terms of relationships? We're really focused on building community and it elevates 150,000 women globally. Wow, um, it's that big. It is, and but we, we like to say it is uh, the largest community that feels really small. <laughs> and I <laughs> hear that time and time again. Um, we do a thousand events um, all over the world and women will say, I've never felt more comfortable. I've walked in and felt immediately accepted. People are very kind, they're generous, they're interesting. Because for us, you know, networks cannot be um, homogeneous. You have to tap into diversity of thought, diversity of experience, diversity of industry, of age, of, you know, diversity of race and religion. I mean, we, that diversity within your network helps to expand your mind and your opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so from our thousand plus events a year where people are building these organic connections in person and I still believe in the power of in person uh, to our online squads program which is a peer mentoring program we've had 6,000 women go through this program and it's great groups of six to eight women who meet for half an hour a week via online video chat over 12 weeks we have a set structure and cadence but we've found that 80% of those women are more confident in their career and confidence directly correlates to career success and growth. And that isn't just about meeting the women within your group. It's about building in that time, half an hour a week, where you're, you're connecting with other people. You're having conversations. You're listening to others. And part of it is you're sharing your goals, what you need, making that ask. And it, we've, seen, we've seen it work. So at Elevate, again, it's how do you take a big community but make it feel small? So you're making those connections that go deeper that lead to the greater impact. That's an awesome program. How do people get, how do people get involved in this? Who, who is Elevate geared towards? Uh, so Elevate is geared towards professional women. Mm -hmm. uh, that could be work in the workplace, solo entrepreneurs, building your own business. Uh, anyone who's looking to build that community and tap into that network. Um, a lot of it's centered around career progress and growth opportunities, but it goes beyond that. When we talk about opportunities, it's not just that your next job, it's the board opportunity, mm -hmm. it's finding the advisors for your business, the funding for your business, the customers and clients, the peer support. It's really about creating opportunities for you and your advancement through tapping into the power of a network. Um, it's, it's not a new and novel idea. Um, men, frankly, have been networking for years and years, you know, and have seen the benefits of it. And women, it's time to own our community and own the work we put into relationships and the impact that that can have on ourselves and our families. What are the biggest obstacles or challenges that some of the women that are going through the program are facing either before, you know, that's, that's yeah. said, hey, it's now it's time I really need to join Elevate or, or even just going through the, you know, these programs or some of the experiences that they're having? A lot of you, a lot you've mentioned today, yeah. right? So the first thing I would say is, um, oftentimes we look to network when we need something. So thank you. And, and that's not the right time. Uh, it should be something you're investing in from, you know, the earliest ages, you know, high school, college, start building those relationships with who's around you, but keeping those relationships. You never know where people end up, right? Um, we were connected through someone that I went to college, we're connected, um, so through someone I went to college with and it just kind of happened and now we know multiple people in common. Yeah. Um, but you know, I've stayed in touch with John and Alexis and, and then that led to big, this. Big shout out. <laughs> yeah. Big Mac. Um, but so yeah, so start early. Yeah. Uh, is the first piece of advice. Can, can I interrupt for yeah, one second? So something do. that you said, and I, I love, there's a, a gentleman by the name of Harvey McKay. I don't know if you've heard of him, but I love, he wrote a book. It's called Dig Your Well Before You're Thirsty. And oh, yeah. to, to your point, again, don't network for need. 
Yeah. And, and I love, love this saying, you know, don't, uh, you know, the worst time to uh, look for spare tires after you've got a flat. Yeah. You know? No, I mean, yeah, be prepared, start yeah. networking. I think the second is there's a lot of stigma around networking. People feel like it's dirty. Um, it's kind of how I felt when someone said you should get go into sales. And I'm like, mm, salespeople. Um, but, it's, but it's not true. Networking is simply relationship building. And it's relationship building specifically around, you know, at least the way I define it, around career, profession. It doesn't always have to be. And I think we define what that is in many different ways. We have side hustles and different passions. Um, you know, networking in within certain spaces that I'm passionate about from a philanthropy level got me into other opportunities within that. So uh, it, it's really about building those deeper relationships and building it beyond your small, close-knit group that you may surround yourself with every day. So you have your friends that you're connecting with, but then what goes beyond that? How do you intentionally broaden that? Um, because it's through broadening that that, you know, the the amplification of ideas and exposure to opportunities really becomes greater. Uh, I think the third thing is that it takes time. So people are like, I don't have time. Completely understand that. Very few people have a lot of excess time in a day. But it's, you know, and something we talked about earlier, there's ways you build it into what you're already doing. Um, You know, you read an article, you think it's interesting, forward it to someone. You are on social media, don't just watch engage, like mm-hmm. something, make a comment. Mm-hmm. So within your behaviors, how do you start to work in networking? But also you do need to dedicate some time uh, because it's, it's something that will pay off in the long run. Just like we need to dedicate time towards, you know, mental health and relaxation or towards <clears throat> physical health. Dedicating time to your network is, is also a form of investing in, in your health. Uh, financial well-being, access to opportunity, access to support in other ways. Yeah, it's so funny. We should have just done a soliloquy with you because all the stuff that you're talking about, this is what I preach. You're hitting the nail on the head. The mental health is a huge issue um, that's going on. There's a loneliness epidemic. Oh, yeah. That's go- are you familiar with that? Yeah. Yes. So I'm intimately familiar with it. It's crazy. It's yeah. a, been, And it's real. And the people need to understand, you know, we're in a transaction society. It's not, and that's, that's the way that things are going. And that's, that's a problem. And the remote working is causing, you know, it's mm-hmm. great because you want to have that flexibility, but working remotely, they've got now all this science behind it. It's leading to a lot of these, these, the, the depression, the loneliness, mm-hmm. and then the lack of connectivity um, is, is. Well, and we, I, so I absolutely agree. Um, we're actually doing some tests right now specifically around smaller groups of women who are remote workers and building some community and touch points there. But we see within our own company. So at Elevate, we have a number of employees that are full-time remote. And we talk very transparently about what that means. How do you engage with others, especially when you're not just running into someone in the kitchen, uh, grabbing a cup of coffee and talking about what you did this weekend. So a lot of the interactions with the team, if it's meetings or Slack or video chat, feels more transactional. So we really looked at how do we build in more of community time, time to get to know people, time to um, really set aside for that relationship building that doesn't happen often in a digital world. Um, And it can get very lonely. We're humans. Like at the core, we're humans. We're based on connection and relationship. And I think it's important to, to note that as the world changes, we don't have all the answers. We don't have it figured out. And so our behaviors need to change to compensate for this new reality of being maybe just behind a camera all day. Yeah, you're hitting the nail on the head. I've got a couple books. I'm gonna when we when we wrap up, I'm gonna share with you that, that are gonna speak to you. Okay, you know? <laughs> oh, I yeah. can't wait. Yeah, and, and some introduction. I want to introduce you to Wayne, who, uh-huh. who wrote that book, and and uh, um, I think uh, do you know who Dan Chabelle is? He's no. a best-selling author, and he does a lot of workplace. Um, but he actually just wrote um, a really interesting book that it's about kind of like the loneliness, the, the connectivity, yeah. the lack of connectivity, how to go about doing it that I think that will, I think you'll just enjoy and something that you also want to share okay. you know, with, yeah, with, with all Perfect. of your networks. Um, I know that we're a little tight on time. Uh, can I ask you a couple random questions sure. before we go? All right, yeah. just a couple random. I usually don't like these, right? But give me a number between, oh, I don't know, one and 12. 
Oh, a seven. Seven. Wow. Does seven have any meaning to you? Like you just ran it's, that? It's my son's uh, baseball number. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay, cool. Um, what do you do to remember somebody's name? I'm terrible about this, actually. I really am, am bad with names. Um, I can... So one, if I see it written, uh, and if I write it too, then I'll have a more likelihood of remembering it. And I try to connect that person to someone else I know with the same name. Mm, that's a good one. So you want to learn a trick? I do. Um, okay. Please. So, <clears throat> I'm listening so, so intently. This, so this is great. I learned this and my my uh, the ability to remember names has gone up significantly. Okay. So so do you know who Jim Quick is? He's a memory expert. He's no, but I feel so un. un cultured or unconnected you got well, there's a so many wealth people, of people yeah. <laughs> so about. jim quick fascinating guy and i was fortunate enough to to get taught by jim um he's got i think he's got a podcast he's got books all stuff but anyways um how he laid it out first he says if, if i bet if i gave you a million dollars would you be able to remember my name or whoever's name sure sure yes. right so yes. you can do it so a lot of times what happens is people don't say they've, they've told the story. I'm not good at names because it's hard. Uh -huh. I've done it. You've done it. And we've all done it. Everyone listening yeah. has done it. That's it's just it is not easy because what happens is you meet somebody, you get a little nervous, you got other things to talk about. And then by the time that you've already gone somewhere else, you're like, oh, my God, who am I talking to? And then people are afraid to ask, yeah. you know, because then it's like, oh, you don't want to offend somebody mm -hmm. or, you know, maybe you don't pronounce it right. So so he the, the trick is here's an acronym. Ready? Be suave. So the B is you got to believe that you can do it first and foremost. So the story about I can't remember names, you can remember Stop names. Stop telling yourself that story. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the E, so for B E, is to exercise, meaning just like anything else, like it's a muscle. You know, you got to practice. You know, if you don't hit the gym, your muscle will it will atrophy. Mm -hmm. Okay. The S in suave is you got to say the name. You know, mm -hmm. we've all heard that before. Christy, you know, great talking to you, uh -huh. you know. Um, the U in suave is you have to understand the name. So a, a way to, you know, try to understand like the meaning, mm -hmm. you know, behind their name, you know. So, oh, you know, is it a family name or something like that? Or the A, I'm sorry, the A is to ask about the name. Mm -hmm. So, you know, is that a family name or, you know, where did you get that name? Is it, you know, do you have a cousin named that? Whatever sure. that is. Okay. And then the V in the suave is you have to visualize. So so visualize the name. So like you said, you tied it to a friend that that has. So so maybe the two of them getting together, or maybe they're rope. And it's got to be if you can be crazy about the maybe they're jumping rope or something like really creative. The more creative, okay. You know, because images were a picture, were an image. And then the E is you've got to end the conversation with their name. So again, saying it. So Christy, it was awesome talking to you. So this way you've kind of, so there's a lot going on. And if you can practice that, and, and even myself, like there, there, I'll find myself, it does take, it, just like any other habit, like we've talked about earlier, it takes practice, but whew, it's I, changed. I, so I'm going to try that. I, I, I think something that always holds me back is confidence because I'm afraid I'm going to say their name and then it's wrong. Like I don't have and, and chances are it is not right. It's right. But like, I'm <laughs> yeah. always lacking in confidence that I'm going to, you know, get it right. Yeah. And that's, that's why the ask, because okay. then it's okay. Cause then you can kind of talk about it. Like, okay. and it's hard, trust me. And, and, and I, this is something that Jim didn't teach me, but this is something that I'd learned from, I forgot who had taught me this, but if it's possible, if you can wait six seconds before um, giving your name or asking for their uh -huh. name. There's something about that six seconds on average okay. that like, so, so it's, it's hard to do because most people are like, Oh, Hey, I'm such and such uh -huh. or whatever. But if you could come up with some other, other type of talking point and say, Oh, by the way, you know, my name is Adam or, you know, I, I didn't catch your name or sure. something like that because there's something about that. There's so much processing in your brain that's going on in those six seconds that, um, but again, that's hard. Okay. I'm not saying I'm I not, know I'm going to practice yeah. because it's definitely something it's that great skill. it, you know, causes me anxiety is yeah. the, remembering names. And oh, it's, it's so important. Oh, it's so, it's so hard. But when you can do, I mean, it's just amazing. And then, you know, people think is that's the most important people love their names. It's something they've been told is a little less since they were yeah. so young. So it's, it's like, you know, it gives them like a, a uh, an eargasm hearing their own name on a subconscious level. So, all right, uh, uh, let me get one other question, and then I'll let you go. I'm sorry, I could no, talk to you all day. I love this. All right, <laughs> uh, give me a number between 17 and 59. 33. Wow, another one. Good I know word. it's my favorite number. Uh, how, all right, how, how is 33 a favorite? 
Um, I don't know. My college roommate, Jen Kearney Lowe. Hi, Jen. Uh, <laughs> his birthday well, shout is today. the yeah. 13th and mine's the 23rd. And so, I don't know. We're somehow 33 just You've ended had this up number. being this has been like a number, this number for a while. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I like it. Cool. If I If I ever go to Atlantic City, which I don't often do, but if I do... 33. 33 on roulette. So, so I love that number because this question that I'm about to ask you okay. is actually a question that I, when I teach people about having conversations, you know, I try to teach people, you know, the, the small talk is the big talk. Mm -hmm. And if you can kind of get past the quote unquote small talk and you can really get deep with somebody or really just get to know someone sure. that you can really like the right types of questions will really kind of spark mm -hmm. good conversation. So one of my favorite questions to ask people is where's your favorite place to get a slice of pizza? Oh, well, so this is a tough question. For many reasons. Oh, whew, okay. We're unpacking. Um, I live in Brooklyn. Yeah. So there's not just one way to do pizza. Mm, that's a, okay. All right. I, I see where you're going on this. I do like Roberta's for like brick oven. Fornino's pretty good. Um, if you're talking about like a New York slice, um, there's a place called Sal's that has really good New York slices, but they also have the thin crust Sicilian with pepperoni, which is phenomenal. And they put so much pepperoni in. It's really good pepperoni. So it really just Is depends. It yeah, Sal's has the thin crust Sicilian. Uh, Roberta's or Fornino have the brick oven. If I'm doing brick oven, I'm partial to the truffle mushroom with olives. <sighs> I, I really enjoy my pizza. Yeah, um, yeah that's what and I, this is I, a good like. Clearly, we can have we yeah. can have, do share. What is yeah. your where is your favorite well, pizza? So that's where we were, we were going to go today for lunch. I was okay. actually going to take you to it. It's called Tenth Street Pizza. Okay. And 10th Street Pizza, it was under the radar up until a week ago, which I absolutely love. Oh. But what happened is there's a there's a um, a guy, Dave Portnoy, mm -hmm. and he's got this thing called uh -huh. Barstool. Are you yep. familiar with Bar? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he does this thing where he goes around and he ranks pizza places. <laughs> and are you familiar? Do you know what? I didn't know about yeah. it. I just learned about this. So, so anyway, so he went to 10th Street last week okay. and he gave it an 8.6. And I guess an 8.6 is like, it's like one of his top five ratings. Mm -hmm. And now ever since, it, the places just, you can't even, you know, there's two hour oh, ways. Yeah, so I mean, I good have, for them. Good for, you know, yeah. 10th Street Pizza. But <laughs> you have a good product. You, get, you know, that's what we all hope for, business, yeah. business owners, that someone's going to recognize it and it breaks it open. Well, maybe but, what uh, you not just, good for the loyal customers. Yeah. Well, maybe what you just did, did it for Ray's. Maybe right. Ray's just, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, but it's, that's a good question. I mean, it's a great you question. You start talking about food and there's a lot, there's a lot there. Who doesn't like pizza? I mean, really? Yeah. No, I mean, like I mean, you, I mean, just the, the, the emotion, the, the, like the energy level yeah. when you ask the right kinds of questions is awesome because you know, when you, when you're able to elicit uh, emotion it, it drives motion so mm -hmm. so um that's a great way to really get under the hood of somebody so too. i have a question for you uh -oh. uh, um, so this is the podcaster and you flipping no, it no i do okay. have questions yeah. for you but this this i was speaking at an elevate event a couple months ago and one of the speakers said this and it really it really resonated it's something that i, I think about quite a bit which is when i meet people my instinct is to find things in common Right? Let's find things in common so we have things to talk about. But that oftentimes what that does is you start to connect with people that are very similar to you. And so she strives to find things that are different and ask questions about that and to celebrate the differences so that the people she's connecting with in her network um, are more diverse in thought and idea versus more similar to who so, she is. So, so I love that. And what I do, what I try to do is I actually more in your camp, but I try to find something that I, that I not necessarily may even connect, but something that I like about mm -hmm. somebody. So I got to first try to find something that I like about them. So we, there is a connection because what you want to do to, to, uh, to like is to be liked. Mm -hmm. So that to, to find something that we both, there's that common ground that yeah. we, that we have. So there is that connection. And then from there to explore the differences, because it is a great point. Cause you don't, what happens is you get stuck in an echo chamber, yeah. you know, where you're hearing the same kinds of ideas. A lot of times people are in the same, um, you know, they're getting the same feeds, 
you know, so you're hearing all the same stuff, the same conversations, talking about the same books, the same movies. So, you know, from there, I like to then kind of jump off and Bring go into the, into the different, different, into the difference. But yeah, so. I love that. Yeah. And when you meet someone, so if you're networking professionally, mm-hmm. do you start off asking what someone does? No, I don't ever. I, I'm so anti the, the, I mean, I love that. I totally agree. Yeah. So, so 76% of people are not happy in their jobs. Mm -hmm. So getting back to what I talked about before with emotion, Mm -hmm. if I asked you about, well, maybe not you because you're very passionate about your job and and I should actually, let me back up because most of the time it depends on the circles in which I'm in. Cause when you're usually up with the certain types of people that are passionate about it, Mm -hmm. you do want to talk about there. Cause I, you know, we do want to talk about this, but the majority of people are actively unhappy in their jobs. Mm -hmm. So maybe a way of, so, so, and plus I want to get to know someone for who they are too. Like I'd rather not if you're famous or if you're a CEO or if you're whatever, I I don't care about that. I care about Mm -hmm. you. I care about, so, um, I want to maybe something, a question that you, you're, that I would recommend to people is, you know, what do you have to look forward to in a project that you're working on? Mm -hmm. You know, if if you want to kind of go to the waters of, of, uh, I think you started the conversation like, what are you excited about right now? You know, there was something along, I know I was talking about the Mobilized Women Summit, which I'm really excited about. So yeah. I, we somehow got to that. But, you know, what's, what's getting you excited? Yeah, that's what I want to know because then I'm going to learn about you. We're going to, what, it, and that, oh, cool. So you're into that or into these summit, whatever it might be, whether it's the pizza, because then from there, and then the, the more yeses we can share, the more of that connection. So even if we do have a disagreement, mm-hmm. We already have earned a, enough respect with each other that we're more apt to hear it out as opposed to shut down immediately. Yeah. You know, so sometimes people meet, and this is a lot of stuff I, I, I teach diversity and inclusion, believe it or not, as a white entitled man, but, but really it's about finding that connection first. Mm-hmm. That's the, we have way more things that we have in common than we don't. Yeah. So, so let's, let's earn some credibility with each other. What do we share? What are some of the things that we have in common? Okay, cool. And then we can diverge into other things and say, oh, well, well how did you get to that train of yeah. thought? And, 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 you know, sometimes, you know, you could be right relatively right, right now, but it's trying to keep the open mm-hmm. mind, um, and having that intention, but that's a great question. And that's awesome insight. Right. Um, and I've heard that. And I think that whoever that was that, that shared that, I, I bet she would probably agree with getting to the yes before the difference. Yeah, I'm because, sure. Yeah, I've heard that, but that's a, that's a really good question. What are other questions you ask? Say you're at a networking event mm-hmm. or a party, a neighborhood party, like questions you ask someone to kind of break the ice. Yeah, there's so many. So, uh, God, great, great questions also. Um, there are so many questions. You know, what is it that, you know, what are you looking forward to? What is, you know, I really like just yeah. uh, rather than giving direct questions, I'd rather give you answers that are to get people to think about it for mm-hmm. them. And again, it's these are emotion questions that are going to drive things that are going to trigger happiness you know, hobbies, what are, you know, what are you interested in? But a way of asking it is what are you, yeah, pas- what are you passionate about? Yeah. Because you can hop right to it. I mean, even sometimes I, I had somebody walk up to me at, at an event, no, what do you do for a living? I said, how about this? How about we, I'd love to know about what you are passionate about. And if that's something, I'll tell you what I'm passionate about. And if there's stuff there, then we can get into that later. And, yeah. and it was, and, and I wasn't, I think I delivered that message mm-hmm. somewhat well, and we ended up having a great conversation where immediately, had we not gone that path, I was just, just so turned off. I mean, you just started with, well, this is my title, and this is my company, and this is what we do. I think people kind of start to tune out a little bit, you know, because it's not connecting to the human. It's, you know, into that human Correct. elements. It's connecting to, you know, a, a resume, Yeah. right? And and everything you're saying, it's just like, yes, because, <laughs> you know, even if you're at an event and um, they're interview- introducing a speaker and it's like, well, here's, you know, Christy Wallace, CEO, Elevate Network. What does that mean? Like, what, like, what does that mean? But if it's, here's Christy Wallace, she's incredibly impassionate about, you know, building community, about supporting girls in leadership development, about helping women uh, connect to opportunity and career advancement, whatever that is, then people are like, they know who you are. Yeah. And it, it immediately resonates. So we have to move beyond that name, title, rank, but into the more human elements. Could completely agree with you. Um, you nailed it. I mean, you really just nailed it. I'll tell you something. You guys put on a lot of events. So you said a thousand is, I mean, that's a, that's a crazy number. I'll, I'll tell you something too, that I, I think that your audience or just anybody should listen to is 
before going to an event. I mean, there's a whole to get mm -hmm. the most out of an event. Um, I recommend do homework ahead of time. We talked yes. about this beforehand. Yeah. So if I see you're speaking at this event, uh, you know, look to see who's going to be there. Look to see what the attire. I mean, there's so much. I have a whole course on uh -huh. it, but, but high level, you know, if you can reach out ahead of time. Hey, Christy, I see that you're going to be a speaker or something. Mm -hmm. I, I can't wait to see, you know, I can't wait to, you know, it makes you feel more comfortable. You're excited. People are going to be yeah. there. You might go looking, hey, where's that Adam guy that actually sent me a note? Yeah. Um, also, see who other people are going to be attending because sometimes mm -hmm. the people that put the events together, they'll share the list. So you might see, and because we didn't get to talk about this on camera, but introverts, extroverts, all that kind of stuff, um, ambiverts, uh -huh. <laughs> um, what happens is a lot of times people go in, it's also having the wrong intent. Oh, I don't want to go to a networking mm -hmm. event. I hate network. I hate people. You don't. That's just your insecurity talking, or you don't know what an event properly is, or you don't know how to have the right kinds of conversations. So what you do, identify some people that are going to be there, reach out to them ahead of time. Hey, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be at this event. I notice that you're going to be here too. You seem like someone that's interesting. And if you'd like to meet ahead of time, or maybe just know that yeah. I'm going to be there. And then now you already have someone to look forward to. So you get more out of the event you've got. And then, and then now you've, the average person talks to less than one person they know at an event. And then only less than 30% of people even follow up. So I'm sorry to go on at this tangent. No, but, 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 but we're, I can't believe we're only just meeting because, uh, so on the Elevate website, it's very similar to that, which is we, um, we stopped listing people by name and title, but more, what are, what are you trying to accomplish and what do you have to offer to the community? So making it more about where are those opportunities for connection at our events, we have an algorithm that, that suggests people that you should connect with at the event. And then you can connect with them awesome. prior to the events. We always say leading up to an event, like here's some people, as soon as you register, here's some people that are going that you might be interested in. So great. And then we follow up and say, follow up with those connections. The follow up, fortunes in the follow up. The follow up is huge. I cannot tell you. And literally it's it, one of my biggest pet peeves is the amount of work people put into meeting someone. Will you meet me for coffee? Will you have a quick conversation? Can we, whatever that is. Yeah. And then you never hear from them again. Yes, yes. You put so much effort into <laughs> like getting in front of someone and then nothing into, into the follow-up. And you know what? The follow-up doesn't have to be, this is what I want from you or this is what I need. It can simply be really great to connect. Wonderful. I loved this conversation. This stood out to me. Hope to stay in touch. You know, but there's there's just no <clears throat> follow-through. And then if, if I... The, you know, the amount of connections I've made that just have fallen off a cliff because after that initial it's, it's, it's touch amazing. point. So, so I'll, I'll teach something else. I'll give you something else that is a, a really good tip. So say we met at a, um, we met at the first, for the first time we're at an event okay. and, um, whatever, you know, if, if, in case you don't have a pen, cause people don't carry pens anymore, mm -hmm. send an invite on LinkedIn mm -hmm. and, or even if they were connected ahead of time, because yeah. a lot of people are already connected. So, and then in the LinkedIn, because a lot of times people don't have their own databases, send a note in the LinkedIn message. Christy, awesome. We, and you know, great seeing you. Your speech was fantastic. Here are some of the points that, I, that really meant something to me. Be very specific about what you talked about and then put it in the LinkedIn because there's a couple reasons. Number one, first and foremost, it's just the right thing to do because it's follow up, like sure. what we've talked about, yeah. like you sh should. Um, second, you are going to now it's in LinkedIn. So it's a shared database. So the information's there. So we might've mm -hmm. forgotten you meet so many other yeah. people. Now that information is there. So, so you might've forgotten about me. Mm -hmm. Odds are you're talking to a bunch of different people, but when you get that LinkedIn, oh yeah, Adam, we talked about mm -hmm. this. I remember that. Okay. And then also it helps me. And then, <clears throat> because you might not have a database or something. Yeah. So this way that information is there or so, so let's even say a year or two goes by. You, we come across each other or there might be something that you have a need for because now you know how to ask. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll see, oh, this is what we talked about. Now it's again that you've got that information to jog the memory because it goes back. A lot of times people don't respond to other people. It's just, it's just, it's not because they don't want to talk to you or they're, a lot of times it is too busy, but it's because they just forgot. They don't want to look, they're afraid to look a certain way. But here, if you've just got a little bit of information right there, that's going to spark. That's going to, mm -hmm. that's going to help. So, so, so yeah, there's, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, I can just see your body forever. language. Yeah, yeah. No, that, I mean, that. but it's it's like all of these tips. Uh, it 
you know, it doesn't come natural to everyone. No, 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 no. And not at all. so that's why the resources you have uh, and this this podcast and show it's really important. I think there's not one way to network. It's figuring out what's authentic to you. Some yes, are introverts yes, yes. and extroverts and ambiverts and you know different places and different commitments and experiences. But the reality is there's a way to do it. And the tips and the insights that you shared are are really powerful and things that any of us can do to remember names, to spark conversation, to follow up, to build community and connection. And back to we're humans yeah. and connection is a big part of what we need. So wow. keep at it. That was awesome. I got one question. I, mean, I got a ton, but I'm only at one before okay. I let you go. You talked about this algorithm and the, and, and putting people together. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah. Like that, I, I'd love to hear if you could tell me like anything that's come of that or people that, I mean, cause it's really, yeah. you, you're exponentially expediting the relationship and helping to so where the average person is statistically talks to less than one person i bet it's high i, I bet you have a better number mm -hmm. because of what you're doing yeah i mean we really the algorithm's really looking at a, a variety of different um metrics and, and for some of our events too i mean there's events we have that are specific to um, senior women in business or specific to young professionals so by nature now you're in a cohort of people that have share some similarity i be, be at career stage we do mentoring events. It's a speed dating for mentoring. So during the course of the event, you might speak to six to seven different mentors, um, and it's on a very short-term actionable goal. So you, it's not even about breaking the ice. You've got seven minutes to go and be like, yeah. I want to do X, or I'm struggling with Y. Um, and it's all around the central theme of the event, and it's a great way to immediately see, do we have a connection? How do we get along? How are we you know, building these relationships? Uh, that serve to help you move forward. Um, but with the algorithm, it's looking at, you know, everything from, you know, your career stage and in industry to, you know, what are you trying to accomplish? Um, and what, what do you have to offer to the community? And how can we start to make those connections leading up to an event? Because we want you to walk in and feel comfortable, to feel welcome, and to feel like, your time is valuable and we're helping to make the most of that time and build the connections that uh, serve you today, tomorrow and forever. That's fantastic. Anyone who's part of that community is very fortunate. I mean, there, I mean, I, again, we could have a whole podcast of all of the, the success stories that come out of that, but uh, I want to make sure we're, we're going to spread this message. I think you are fantastic. Thank Th you. This has been a lot of fun. This has I been really, a lot of fun. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. That was, that was great. So thank you for coming on.